listeners and welcome to episode 47 of the Nigeria Football Weekly Podcast with me, your host, Olu Uh As you know, it's not good news. I'm here to review the game against Tunisia as Nigeria got unfortunately dumped out of the AFCON in the round of 16. We lost 1-0 to Tunisia. Um, not the best of times, but what can we do, you know? These things happen, but unfortunately our journey is over. Um, so on this episode, it should be a quick one, but I'm just wrapping up how the game went and what we have to look forward to as Nigerians. Um, so yeah, in terms of how the game went, we started with our original lineup from the games against Egypt and Sudan, as predicted. Uh, Marika Okoye was in goal, Ola Aino right back, Chust Ekonga and Romero as centre-back, Zedu Sanusi starting at left-back, Ndidi and Aribo continued at, in the centre of the park, Moses Simon started on the left wing, Yana Cho just behind the striker, Chukweze on the right wing, and Taiwa Awoni as the number nine. Um, and in terms of players we saw come off the bench, we saw Alex Wobi come on in the 59th minute. Um, unfortunately, he was only on the pitch for about seven minutes before he got sent off, which obviously played a part in us losing the game. I thought he was very, very, very unlucky. It was very, very harsh um, red card, to be honest. Um, Peter Laika came on in the 60th minute to replace Taiwa when he went, things were not working. Um, Omar Sadiq came on for the last 16 minutes of the game. And kudos to Omar Sadiq, man. He was really, really good, in my opinion. And then, because it's Ahmed Musa's last AFCON, I guess they had to give him the ceremonial two minutes to play and end the game in what's a very unfamiliar position. So Ahmed Musa was playing central attacking midfielder for the last few minutes of the game against the Tunisians. So, how did the game go? Uh, we considered a goal courtesy of a player called Youssef Msakni. He scored in the 47th minute, just after the after halftime. Um, when you look at the stats, you have to say, you can say Nigeria dominated the game based on stats, but ultimately, I just think we didn't have enough pressure, or we didn't put enough pressure on the Tunisians. So, we had 13 shots to Tunisia 7. However, of our 13 shots on goal, we only had one on target in the entire game. So that tells you the picture, paints the picture of how the game went. We had 54% of possession, 82% accuracy compared to the Tunisian, 79%. Um, we obviously got one yellow card and a red card. Um, and we had five corner kicks, which we were unfortunately not able to do anything from. Um, first half was very, very tentative. I thought Nigeria played a bit, not arrogantly, but it, it felt like they didn't, take the game to their opponents. Like, they just thought that the goal would eventually come no matter what. Um, and I think most Nigerians would agree with me in terms of that sentiment throughout the game, especially in the first half. Um, we had a, we had to clear the ball off the line in the ninth minute. That was Tunisia's first chance. Um, so, uh, I think it was Ekong who cleared the ball off the nine. In the 11th minute, Aribo hit the side netting um, after a block. I mean, basically, there was a block on an Aribo shot, which ended up hitting the side netting. Um, Awoni just missed the header in the 15th minute after a dangerous cross by Samuel Chukweze. And then in, 19th min in the 19th minute, there was also good work from Chukweze to Olaino. And then Olaino played a very good cutback, but nothing came from it. Kelechi Anacho also got a lazy yellow card in the 19th minute, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, so the first half was very, very uneventful, to be honest. It was very... It was a typical like knockout game where both teams are trying to fill themselves out. And you have to say the Tunisians set themselves up very, very well. It looks like they got their tactics spot on. Every time Simon or Chukweze got the ball, they just got overcrowded. There was either two or three people marking them at each time. And Nigeria did not have any penetration through the middle. Um, I guess these are the games where you see the I guess issue of playing with a second striker rather than a proper number 10 who could create chances for you. Um, because through the middle, we just weren't very great. I would have probably moved the Rebo up forward and played Oyeka or Nwakali, um, but who am I? I'm just a fan who loves Super Eagles. Anyway, in the second half, first things first, Tunisia score straight away for the seventh minute. And Sagni takes a shot after going past Ndidi. Nobody blocked the shot. And then you have to say, um, Marika Akui got a palm to it, but he palmed it into the net. Um, I still think Madoka Okoye is Nigeria's best goalkeeper, regardless of what people say. I think there's this weird agenda to try and discredit him and his level at the moment. But you have to admit, when you look at our options at goalkeeper, yes, it's probably our weakest position as a country, but he's still the best we've got. But that being said, 
it was a Madagascar Kuego keeping error, and hopefully he will learn from it and bounce back um, from the issue. Um, after that, um, in fifty fifth minute, Kelechi ran with the ball, space opened up. He could have slid the ball too crazy on the right, but he was very tentative and he just took the shot, which just went past the post. And then in in the sixtieth minute, obviously. Eguavo had enough, so that's when he made the changes, taking Yanacho off and bringing on Iwobi, as well as taking Awoni off and bringing on Olainka. Um, but we didn't really have any chance to make the best of it because Iwobi got a red card. Um, so that was really, really unfortunate. Um, I thought after that game, it was more Nigeria just trying to force the issue without really getting anywhere, to be honest. You have to say we did play better with 10 men, which tells you just how badly we probably played throughout the game. One player who did re who did redeem himself in this game, though, was Umar Sadiq. I thought he was really, really good. His physicality was just too much for the Tunisians. And you you could say that if Umar Sadiq started the game, maybe he would have offered a different threat to the Tunisians than what time when he was able to provide. And also, just before the game ended in the 91st minute, Peter Alainka played a great, a great pass from almost like close to the halfway line and sets Omar Sadiq through on goal, but it was towards the right of the box. Um, and unfortunately, Omar Sadiq's ball hit the ball towards the goal, but it just went past the post towards the left. Um, and that was pretty much our last chance. Once that chance happened, I kind of knew it was curtains for the Super Eagles and we were on our way out of the tournament. That being said, there were still some pretty good performances. As like I said, Sadiq Omar was really, really good. I thought Peter Alainka, um really made a good showing of himself in his cameo role as well off the bench. Um, he was probing and trying his best to make things happen. And you could see um, his quality dur during the game. I thought Ola and I had a very good game still. I mean, he's definitely going to be Nigeria's right back for the foreseeable future. He's enhanced his reputation during this tournament and done his claims to that spot no harm whatsoever. I thought Ndidi and Aribo were also pretty good, to be fair. Standard. Um, and Didi tried to take a few shots here and there, which just showed our desperation when he probably could have made the better move. But when you're 1-0 down and about to head home, desperate <laughs> measures, you just do things you won't usually do. Um, who are the players that really left a lot to be desired? I thought Kelechi Anacho was really poor in this game, to be honest. Um, he just never got going in this game. Maybe he wanted it too much, I don't know, but his performances left a lot to be desired in this game. Taiwa Wani also was not great. He just couldn't impose himself on the Tunisians in any way. Um, I mean, that's why he got subbed off for Olainka. I thought Chukweze really had a bad game, to be honest. Um, we thought he could kick on in this tournament, but apart from his goal against Sudan, you have to say it's been a bit of a disappointing tournament for Chukweze. Yes, he's still coming back from injury, maybe a month from his last injury, but I thought Chukweze definitely had a much better 2019 AFCON compared to 2020. Two or 2021 but hopefully he will learn from this experience Moses Simon also struggled to be fair like once the Tunisians just decided on their tactic of crowding him out and making sure that they double teamed him at every opportunity I mean he was a bit irre not irrelevant but his his strengths were well nullified should we say by the Tunisians and then obviously Madika okay we have to talk about the mistake that did not help Nigeria anyway um, and I thought Ahmed Musa offered very little in the few minutes he played, but we know it's his last AFCON, so I guess we'll see how it goes with Musa and the rest of the year. Um, you have to say on current form, he probably shouldn't even be in the team going into the World Cup, but we know what they'll say about seniority and the need for leadership and blah, 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 blah. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, final thoughts. We never got really going go in, in the game, and we probably deserve to lose. Tunisia with the better team on the day. Um, the red card was very, very harsh, and it seemed to shock the team into life, which is weird because, like I said, we played better with 10 men compared to 11. Um, so, fair play to the Nijan, superb tactics from them, and good luck to them in the rest of the tournament. Um, they will go on to face Burkina Faso in the quarterfinals. Um, so, in terms of all the other round of 16 fixtures, Burkina Faso drew 1-1 with Gabon. They took the lead to Bertrand Traore before they conceded a last-minute goal from Bruno Equile Manga, the Gabon captain, and then they won on penalty shootout. Um, Gambia beat Guinea. Uh, Musabaro scored again. Musabaro plays in Syria, so he was able to show his quality there in a 1-0 win. Cameroon beat Comoros 2-1, courtesy of a Tokoyakambi goal, as well as Vissar Abubakar scoring his sixth goal of the tournament. 
Um, although the Comoros team scored an absolute worldie of a free kick to make things tense just before the end of the match. But you have to say, Calf did them dirty. They couldn't even play with a recognised goalkeeper, so their left back had to go and go for the game, even though the Tunisians earlier were able to call on their players who had just recently tested negative for COVID without having to self-isolate for five days. So why were the rules changed for Cameroon's opponents? But anyway, it is what it is. Senegal also beat Cape Verde 2-0. Courtesy of Sadio Mane, um, Sadio Mane scored a great goal and then Baba Dieng scored a second to end the game in stoppage time. Cape Verde are really unlucky. They got a similar red card to the one Iwobi got, which did not help the game, to be honest. Same, similarly, in the Cameroon game, a Comoros player got a red card after six minutes for a similar tackle. I thought all those reds were really harsh, to be fair. Like, a yellow would have been fine, but hey, we're in the age of VAR. And then Morocco beat Malawi 2-1. Um, Malawi scored an absolute worldie, probably the goal of the tournament from Mlango. Um, from literally like 40 yards, he just whipped the ball, bent it over Yasin Bono. Um, El Nezri then scored an equalizer just before half time, before Hakimi scored a great free kick with 20 minutes to go to save Morocco's blushes. And then earlier today, we saw Ivory Coast play Egypt, ended 0 0, and then Egypt won 5 4 on penalties with. Um, Eric Bailly missing the penalty for Ivory Coast and Mohamed Salah scoring the winning penalty for the Egyptians and then also Mali and Equatorial Guinea ended 0-0 and also ended up in penalty shootouts where the unfancied Equatorial Guinea team actually won on penalties so Equatorial Guinea are off to play Senegal um, Gambia will face Cameroon Burkina Faso will face Tunisia and then probably the tie of the quarterfinals, Egypt will play Morocco in what will be an all North African affair. So that's it pretty much for our coverage of AFCON. Uh, obviously, we like other teams, but not that much. Uh, but I don't know. It's hard to say who's going to win it from here. If I was a betting man, I'll say Cameroon are going to win it on home. So um, things are just breaking their way. Um, so let's see how it goes. But if not Cameroon, I wouldn't be surprised if Morocco win it. Although I know there have always been this chat about North African teams suffering in sub-Saharan heat. So let's see how it goes. But we wish all the teams all the best. So where does Nigeria stand? As at today, we're not sure who's going to be our manager for our March World Cup qualifiers against Ghana. We know that they mentioned that Jose Pacero will take over before AFCON. Um, but I haven't heard anything in terms of that being confirmed. I know he hasn't signed a contract officially. So... I don't know if he'll come on board or if Austin Ogarvon will be allowed to prosecute the World Cup qualifiers against our arch rivals Ghana. Um, but anyway, we go again in March. We'll be sure to touch on Super Eagles and preview those games before they happen in March. Um, after the international break, there's currently an international break in football in general. Um, we'll be back to give you the regular updates of Nigerian footballers and their performances in Europe as we've done throughout this podcast. So thanks again for sticking with me. I know we're all feeling sad, you know, but these things happen. We go again for the World Cup qualifiers and hopefully we'll see Nigeria at the 2022 World Cup where we could at least reach the round of 16 or who knows, maybe even fix up and make to the quarterfinals. I think most poorly, I'm happy that Victor Sima is going to be back. I think we missed him during the game. It was very, very evident and you could just tell that when you're missing that top, top quality striker, it's always going to affect how well you play or perform as a country. But anyway... We'll, we'll be back, Super Eagles. We'll always go again. Um, but enjoy the rest of AFCON. Have a great week. And I'll see you on the next episode of the show. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and click the bell to get a notification whenever we drop a video. You can also find our social media channels listed below. And of course, up Super Eagles and Nigerano the Ever Carry Last.